Hello, I am William Field and I'm a rising sophomore at Penn State studying to become a secondary education science teacher. So tonight is the night right before my first class for the Philadelphia Urban Seminar. This is my first real education course at Penn State, so I'm very excited and thrilled to be starting that up for me. So going into this course, I must admit that I'm a bit nervous about a few things. I'm nervous about having controversial discussions with peers that students of a different background won't accept me in their class setting, and that I'm going to get scared away from teaching as a career. I have hopes that this course will put these worries away and that this experience will be unique and very educational for me, and that I will have a great outlook on teaching as a career in the end of it. So I'm very excited to see how I'm gonna grow through this course. Hi, it's me again, and I just finished the Philadelphia Urban Seminar. And I have to be honest, this course has been so much more than what I expected and presumed it to be prior to taking this course. I ended up learning so much practical information that I can apply to my future classroom as a future educator and that I can apply currently to my life. So I'm beyond ecstatic that I ended up taking this course and learning all this information because I seriously was not expecting to learn so much practical, useful information that I can apply in my life and classroom in the future. So I'm really happy I took this course. So I'm gonna talk about a few of the things that I um, learned about, and then I'm going to address one that particularly stood out to me. So some of the information that really stood out to me in this course uh, were the detrimental effects of, white, of the white supremacist patriarchy ideology on oppressed individuals, the importance of knowing your gender story and owning your gender story, uh, the value of putting yourself in a stretch in order to grow and better yourself as an individual, and the dangers of confining people to a single story. So these are just a few things that really stood out to me that I didn't know much about prior to taking this course, and I'm happy I learned a lot about. But the one thing that stood out to me the most is the four agreements created by Don Miguel Ruiz. The four agreements stood out to me so much because following them helps you live your life to your full potential. And anyone can use this in their lives. It's not confined to a certain group of people. Anyone can follow this and better their lives by living by these four agreements. They help you live impeccably and free of sin. Sin is anything that works against yourself. So following these agreements helps you work for yourself and not work against yourself. So I'm gonna list off the four agreements right now. The first agreement is to be impeccable with your word. This means to be clear and careful in what you choose to say and to be considerate of yourself and the other people around you. The second agreement is to not take anything personally. This means to have a strong sense of self and to not be swayed or hurt based off the opinions of other people around you. If someone makes a rude comment to you, think that they're insecure about something about themselves and not directly attacking you because of you as a person. The third agreement is to not make any assumptions. When talking to others, ask informed questions in order to answer your questions and sort out any sort of misunderstandings opposed to tying people down to a single story. Be sure not to confine people or groups to a single story based on their race, sexuality, or ability. The fourth agreement is to always do your best. From time to time, our best is gonna be different, but no matter what situation you're in, be always be sure to do your best. So those are the four agreements. Ever since learning about the four agreements, I have a renewed commitment to follow these agreements to have a fulfilled life. I took a moment to reflect on which agreement stood out to me the most and which one applies to my life the most and the, and the practicum site that I observed in the Philadelphia Urban Seminar. And the one that stood out to me the most and applies the most is definitely the second agreement not to take anything personally. When I was very young, I was probably around fifth grade at the time, I took my sports that I played very seriously. I put so much hard work and value and effort into my sports. I played baseball and tennis, and I really had a big dream of just going pro and making a life out of the sports that I love to play. I was definitely a dreamer, and now looking back, I know it's not realistic for me to have done that, but I just was so firm in belief that I could do that. 
And at a young age, I received a lot of criticism because I was rather vocal about having these dreams, thinking that I can go pro. And hearing this from people that I really cared about, it was a big struggle for me. I took the criticism and comments of people saying that I'm not good enough, I'm too small, not strong enough, I'm not quick enough. These comments that people said to me, I took very personally and would just bottle it up and it was not the best feeling. So I, in the past, definitely struggled with taking things personally and reflecting on that now with a new mindset is just really hard to think that I did not live according to the second agreement and it's upsetting to me. But I, I'm very happy now that I have a better understanding of the second agreement and that I can apply it to my life in order to not take, th not take things personally and to realize that the comments and actions of other people, people towards me isn't because of me as a person and it's instead because of a potential insecurity or something that's going on in that person's life. So I'm very happy I'm able to slow down and just think about the reasoning behind why someone is saying something to me instead of taking it personally. Something we learned in class that is very applicable to following the second and third agreement, the second agreement to not take anything personally and the third agreement to not make any assumptions is a concept called I wonder statements. So I wonder statements help you slow down and realize that a person is not intentionally attacking you as a person whenever they make some rude comment or remark or action towards you. And it also helps you not assume certain things about the person who is attacking you. So for example, your immediate reaction could be, or your immediate thought process could be that the person saying rude things to you is a bad person, they don't like me, they're just after me. So those are the initial thoughts that are going to go on your on in your mind if you're not following the second and third agreements. But these I wonder statements can help you slow down and truly follow these second and third agreements. So I'm going to give an example that can be applied to a teacher. So teaching is a high stress job and you're constantly going to be hearing uh, potentially negative comments and remarks from students, fellow teachers, administrators, and parents. So whenever you hear a negative remark from them, instead of just taking it as a personal attack and just being really upset with yourself and questioning your values and beliefs and trying to change, form these I wonder statements. So for example, you can, if a administrator is um, saying some rude things to you, ask yourself, I wonder if this administrator is having a tough time with either their husband or wife. I wonder if there's fighting going on in their household. If a student is um, attacking you in any way, ask, I wonder if this student is in a good situation at home and has good, a good influence with their parents. So slow down and truly ask these questions and this will help you follow the second and third agreement and have a much more fulfilled feeling about your life. My practicum site was a 10th grade chemistry course and it was taught by Mr. Coley. We had some great discussion about the application of the second agreement, not to take anything personally, in the context of teaching. So he has been teaching for five years now, so he's a younger teacher, and early on in his career, he definitely struggled with taking the comments of administrators, students, and parents uh, to heart. And he says that was very emotionally draining on him. So students would tell him and call him out for just not being effective at teaching. And administrators would say that his students aren't performing well enough. And he took these comments and this criticism from these people to heart. And he says it really just was hard on him. And over the course of his career teaching, he has grown to be grounded in himself and his, his belief that he is good enough to teach. 
He says to just be focused on the idea that you are good enough and that will help you avoid taking the comments of others personally. He says this is a major skill to develop as a teacher and it's very difficult to develop, but obeying and following the second agreement in the long run will help you become a much more grounded and effective teacher. Hearing Mr. Coley's story made me really think back to the lecture about the emotions of teaching. Teaching is a very emotionally draining job, and it is so important not to take the comments and criticism from people you're affiliated with to heart and personally. So I have really learned so much in this course and in my practicum site and my cluster group about staying strong in what you believe in and holding value in yourself and your beliefs and to not get swayed or discouraged by the comments and criticisms of other people. To not take that personally is such a crucial thing. This course has truly taught me so much and has given me so many things I want to apply and use in my future classroom. And I'm so thankful I have had the experience to learn these things and meet great people. So thank you for this opportunity. And it has been amazing. Thank you.